I like to always to talk about architecture, not only about the construction, or maybe the construction of something, or the articulation of something, or the composition of something. This means you can talk about architecture of music, architecture of spider web, architecture of a computer system. And I think so. The role of architecture is not only limited of the science of making buildings, which in my case I love to make a building who fly. I'm Tomás Terceno, I'm an artist and live on the planet Earth still. If I would have known what art is, I'm not being an artist anymore. I do not anticipate so much what I do or what I think. I'm somebody who tries to build something. So art also maybe can try to say something which we don't know what is yet. I was born in Argentina and then my parents uh, were not allowed to live in Argentina because there was a dictatorship uh, period. And this means they were forced to exile. And from one to 11, I was living in Italy. And then I, for me, I was an Italian boy, right? And my parents said, oh, we will go back to Argentina, back where, you know what I mean? I was always in a place where um, somehow was not belonging somehow. But you know, I always feel like this kind of uh, political division or nationality was something which not so well fitting to me. And by the way, also I like to travel a lot. Does it mean I always thought that it would be interesting to try to challenge in the way of how a nation and, uh, and borders and this division we inhabit today on the planet Earth. It's kind of maybe like metaphorically and also kind of a different way of thinking, but I'm really engaged on trying to start to build these kind of uh, flying cities. Cloud Cities is a kind of a long-term project of trying to build cities in the air. Basically, we are in the air, no? Uh, but Mr. Phil will always say, like, they call the planet Earth as a spaceship Earth. This means we are traveling all the time around the sun at very high speed. Uh, this means we are floating in space. Now, what I'm speculating is like, well, maybe we can come back to a kind of an older technology, which is called uh, lighter than air, or a way how we were been flying before aeroplanes, which is with balloons. And what is interesting most is like solar balloons, and try to fly only with a solar energy. In the history of humanity, there have been built only eight. I built one of them, luckily, and I'm trying to promote this very much emphasis to try to a new way of transportation, of traveling, and hopefully in habitation. Yeah, this is the flying plaza somehow. People should be big like this, and then they come up here, and here there are these nets, different floors, and then it's standing like this, but when it gets wind, in this direction, this can fly up there. And at the same time, it can collect also energy with the sun because it has uh, these solar panels. This is supposed to be 60 meters high. This is not so big yet, but uh, it will be able to carry a couple of persons. It's like a skyscraper, and then all the skyscraper can go high in the sky when it's getting windy. If you start to build a city or building, start to be very light, that maybe with the wind it starts to fly itself as this kind of kite city or mixture between a kite and a balloon, then you also are more respectful also in the way how you build and the material you use and you know it's a kind of a way to sensibilize and also to challenge the way how we live today on the planet. You see the colors? Oh, you don't see the colors. You see that? When I usually always end up in kind of uh, old uh, studios and somehow always it happened that are very very old spider webs which uh, always fascinate me when cosmologists or astrophysicians were trying to explain uh, how the universe has formed. The way how they describe it is this kind of cosmic web. And the geometrical analogy that they always went try to explain is a three-dimensional spider web. And this means I say, hey, but let's look at this spider web. We were trying from one side to try to uh, scan and reconstruct this kind of complex three-dimensional spider web, but from the other, we try to understand that the web itself is kind of a musical instrument. If I touch this string, how many strings will be connected that are then start to move? Look, you see, the other one is reverberating, the other one is reverberating. This means there is always a kind of a connection that somehow I would like to try to understand. It's very similar also to Hunger Bicocca, no? how people also move and affect the movement one to each other. Basically, it's kind of a very huge surface, which at the same time are three surfaces, which somehow space do not exist until you enter with your own body. Now, when there are two people in the upper layer, they press the layer below. This means you have to move to another layer. When two people are in the same space, they curve. 
space and time much more. And this means people start to fall all together to the same spot, which is then at the end is very difficult to escape. It plays a lot with this kind of idea of proxemia, of the distance that you communicate with one to each other and how much you can get close. If you get too much close, then you get trapped and then you get into this kind of social black hole, which is very difficult to escape or you have to find a way to separate very slowly one to each other. The perception of the other person, it, you became very, very aware and every of your movements somehow, it also implied the responsibility also how others will be affected in the way how you, you live. I'm always inspired to things that I see or hear and also consider myself as a permanent student. You know, when you go to a museum and say, oh, are you a student? I say, oh, of course, you know, and I hope so. I will still say this the same until I'm very, very old. Mm -hmm.